Hello everyone. I welcome you all to my channel. I am Mayur as assistant professor department of EMC University College of Engineering Ramnagar. In this semester we will be concentrating on an important subject called as digital system design using Verilog. For idiom scheme it's a subject code is 18 EC644 for 17915 scheme it's EC663. The first module what we'll be covering today is on introduction and methodology the lecture 1 first let us see the content what we are going to see the few topics are digital systems and embedded systems real world circuits these are the topics which we'll be covering there models and design methodology the digital systems and embedded system so first let us see the word digital what is the digital refers to digital refers to an electronic circuits that represent the information in a special way using a two voltage levels logic 0 and logic 1 that's the digital information there and the word design refers to the systematic process of working out how to construct a circuits that meets the given requirement while satisfying the constraints on cost performance power consumption size weight and other properties it means what when we are designing any model we have to analyze what are the requirement specifications are there and the design model what we are designing should meet certain constraints and these constraints are nothing but few examples are cost performance power consumption size weight and some other properties what we have in detail we'll be studying in the future in the design methodology there so well, let us see the history behind the digital circuits the his history shows that the earlier digital circuits were made up of mechanical systems electromechanical systems and analog circuit systems and these were helpful for a uh, basic simple operations of arithmetic logical operations calculators but they had a lot of disadvantage in this and these were inaccuracy low in speed high in maintenance required so these were the some of the drawbacks in mid 20th century due to the invention of the relay relay again is nothing but a switch which is helpful for on and off of a button there or a switch when it is on it allows the current flow when it is off it closes the current flow so here it is a current control device what we have there but again in this relays also we have certain problems that is about reliability problem and the performance problem and these problems were then overcome due to the invention of vacuum tubes and the transistors as the vacuum tube started evolving the digital circuit started evolving and due to the invention of a silicon especially the transistor started evolving and the major improvements started happening in the digital circuits and the reliability and the performance were improved in the ics there and these were called as integrated circuits whatever the ics manufactured with the help of a silicons they were called as integrated circuits as the manufacturing technology started developing the size of the transistors and the interconnecting wires has started shrinking down and you can see how the size of a computer has been shrinked from the desktop to the now you can observe in the lab <coughs> mobile what we have done in the class through the zoom what is a digital system is a digital system is an electronic circuit that represents the information discrete form so anything which is can be represented in a discrete form are called as digital systems a digital system on the other hand represents a signal as a stream of a discrete values sampled at a discrete point in a time as shown in the figure you can observe in the figure it's a pressure waveform of a sound continuously varying over time and a discrete representation of the waveform in digital system is shown with the help of x marks on the continuous signal what we have it here and all this x mark on this continuous signal are sampled at that particular instant of discrete point so that's why we say this one as a digital system there and this majority of the digital system designed and manufactured today are are called as embedded systems what is an embedded system means in which 
the processing work is done by one or more computers that forms part of a system. Here, if you observe the word embedded, the processing of working is done within a one single system there, where more number of computer can operate within one system. In a simple way, if you want to understand that embedded computer, it consists of a processor core together with the memory components for storing the program and the data for the program to run on the processor core and the other components for transferring the data between the processor core and the rest of the system. What you understand in a simple way here is that, if you take a simple example of a mobile, it consists of a processor, it consists of a memory, it consists of an IO devices. How the synchronization happens between this memory, data, IO devices is the most important operations present in that embedded computer. And how this is being controlled is with the help of an embedded software. So we write a program for this processor core and this software is called as embedded software of a system. Now let us see the practical circuits. That's about real world circuits. Real world circuits are made up of transistors and wires forming part of a physical device or packages. Okay, so if you observe here, any real world circuits, we already seen it in our labs and everything about analog electronics lab that how the transistors, wires, registers, capacitors are used to perform the amplification part or a clipping and clapping circuit, what we are seeing there. And these some of the electrical property of the circuit element together with the physical property of the device or the packages. What happens is that it imposes a certain number of constraints on the design circuit. So what happens is that the designer has to think what are the components has to be chosen? What are the restrictions to be used? What are the constraints of that particular device to be used during the design process? So the designer has to consider so many other parameters, even some of the electrical properties of the devices. There. Okay, now let us see the integrated circuits. There's a real world circuits, what we have there. Real world circuits are integrated circuits logic levels, static load levels, capacity load and propagation delay, wire delay, sequential timing, power, area and packaging. So now if you observe in the modern digital circuits are manufactured on the surface of a small flat piece of pure crystalline silicon. As I said, due to the invention of silicon, the large number of transistors were started dumping inside one IC. Hence the term called as silicon chip. And these silicon chips were also called as integrated circuits. So we can easily summarize that the large number of transistors are formed or deposited inside an IC. How it is deposited, how it is formed is by depositing layers of semiconducting and insulating material in a rectangular and a polygon shape on the chip surface. So we can see here easily the figure of how the transistors are formed with the help of a rectangular shapes and how the interconnection is done with the help of a wires using a metallic wire, generally about a copper, what we are going to use. This is one of the cross section of a photomicrograph of a section of an IC, what we have. There. Now the physical property of the IC determine many important operating characteristics. So here, the most important thing, what we must know is that, what are those properties? That includes speed of switching between the low voltages and high voltages. What is the most important thing is that, how fast it can transit from low to high or high to low. This is one of the important physical property of the IC, which we need to be understandable. The more, among the most significant physical properties, next one is the minimum size of an each element. So whatever the minimum size, which we want to design it inside an IC is called as minimum feature sized and which cannot be further shrinkable. If it further shrink, certain properties gets varied and the IC doesn't work properly there. Okay, and this started evolving when the silicon was introduced and the technology what they were using were of micrometers. 
in the early 70s and 80s it were using of micrometers now in the in the 20th century we can easily say that it is making use of 90 nanometer technology or a 65 nanometer technology there so what is a 95 nanometer technology and 65 nanometer technology it's the distance between the source and the drain between the transistors it's a channel length what we say the length between the drain and the source is a channel length and that is the technology what we specify but earlier earlier it was of nanometer micrometer technology you now it has come to the nanometer technology in the present 21st century it is of having 25 nanometer technology in the 1980s more stated one of the important statement that the number of transistors inside an ic gets doubled every 18 months due to the evolution of the technology there and one of the most familiar and the first family of the digital logic were of ttl families transistor transistor logic families and these families were used bipolar junction transistors connected to form the logic gates so bipolar junction transistors to form a logic gates there one of the simple example what we have is complementary metal oxide semiconductor circuits which were based on field effect transistors one of the simple circuit what you can observe about a cmos inverter is here you can observe one is made up of since it is called as complementary because it consists of both channel that is p channel and n channel that's why it is called as complementary metal oxide semiconductor and this is a simple circuit of a cmos inverter there where gates are connected shorted output is shorted here at the drain and source one is connected to the power supply another to the ground and this is the input and this is output this is acting like a inverter now let us see the functionality how it is performing the operation there now if you observe here the first figure an input is zero p and mos is p mos is turned on and the output becomes one because the power supply from the vcc goes to the output and n mos is off there is no current supply here so that's what what is given when the input voltage is low the n channel is turned off and the p channel is turned on pulling the output high similarly the other operation where the input is one the output is low how when the input is one p mos is off and the n channel is on n mos is on when the n mos is on whatever the current is there from the output it goes to the ground and it becomes output as zero so if you observe when the input voltage is high the p channel transistor is turned off and the n channel transistor is turned on pulling the output low this is the functionality of the simple cmos inverter circuit inside an ic there if you have any questions go to the comment section write down your questions i'll reply to your question if you like my video subscribe to my channel click on the bell icon for further information thank you